Uh, so yesterday we, Rabbi Yochanan said, uh, Rabbi Yochanan said in, in name Rav Bano that an oral, despite the fact that he can't eat truma, and someone's tummy can't eat truma, when it comes to regarding the halacha of spritz, spritzing carbon Pesach, they're, they're different, right? The spritzing carbon Pesach, in, the, in that case, what you're going to, you're going to be able, if you're a tummy, you won't be able to, but if you are a, if you are a full yoyim, or if you are an oral, you would. The Gemara went to prove it, <clears throat> and it proved it about what from, it, it proved it from what from from uh, the Dor Hamidbar that when they went to Eretz Yisrael, they were Arelim, they were Arelim, and they were Tamei Tamei Smeis, and they had a spist upon them. But one of the reasons they were Arelim, the Gemara gave is because for the, it did. Uh, we didn't exactly say, but we're going to say right now. Why would the people in the Midbar? Why were they what Arelim? Why could they be circumcised? In other words, I said the ones who went out of Mitzrayim was circumcised. But the ones who went into it during the midbar were not. So two lines from the bottom on Ayan Aleph on the days, Uva Midbar might time a mahal. In the midbar, what's the reason they weren't mile? Ibay saying Mishum Khulsha the Orcha. You could say because of the, the, the travails of the trip is hard. Or the Ibay Sema Mishum the Lay Nashivla Ruach's finest. The Ruach's finest did not blow. The north wind did not blow. So I mistakenly thought that the north wind. Brings brings healing, so therefore, since it didn't, it didn't since it didn't blow, you, you wouldn't get healed. But we're going to see Rashi, and Rashi says something very very different, and I think it, it makes a big difference. So let's see Rashi says Rashi Ruach's finest, Noicha, it's very calm, Loichama, it's not too hot the wind, Leit Sainenes, it's not too cool, Vichama Zoyrachas, and as a result, the Chama, the sun shines. In other words, it's mashma from Rashi that it's the oh. sun that has the healing quality. But this wind allows the sun to come through. And it's going to answer a question that I had from the Gemara. And, that, and then we'll see Rashi again. It became, it became clearer. Says, says the Gemara. Yeah. When the sun grows, that heals them. Correct, correct. Northeast is cold. A very tough wind. I don't know if that's the wind. I, I don't, I'm not sure. But the south wind is the tough wind. That's the, the according yeah, to the, the Gemara. North, north that that's according to the terms. Again, I'm not sure the winds that we're speaking about are the same winds as what we have. I'm not sure. I mean, a hurricane. You know, I'm just, I don't I'm, I don't think we're speaking about that. Anyway, so the Tanya. But all the forty years they were in the midbar, <clears throat> it didn't blow. Tysus points out. That a Gemara in Gittin, that it always has to blow because if not, then we're if Saris means it didn't blow as much as usual. My time, you might say it didn't blow alone. One reason it didn't blow because we were in the Zufim. The Zufim means like we were degraded, you know, because the Shprach was upset at us. Either Rashi says because of the eagle, Taisu says because of the Miraglim. In order that the Ananiya Kavoy should not disperse. Now let's look at Rashi over here. Now we're going to see my epiphany this morning. This is why the, the north wind didn't blow. In order that Nanekovit should not dissipate, not disperse. They were surrounded by these clouds. And as a result, since they didn't, the north wind didn't blow and the clouds didn't disperse, the sun wasn't able to get in to cure them. You see again, like from Rashi, that it's the sun that had the redeeming quality. It's, it's more, 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 uh, more clear over here. As a result, so it wasn't the wind that did it. So now, Baruch Hashem, because look at the next piece of Gemara, it won't make any sense. It was a cloudy day or a day when the south wind is blowing. You shouldn't go ahead and bris mila. Nor should you go ahead and um, bloodlet. The people do bloodlet and do, do, do bris mila on windy days. Hashem Hashem watches fools. There wasn't a day that it blew. That there wasn't a day that it didn't blow at midnight. It wasn't here after night. And Hashem 
hit all the Bechar. Now, so what, is, what, what does the north wind have to do with Hashem? He could call Bechar. My Talmud, what's the limit over here? In other words, if Hashem destroyed at, at, at midnight at Chatzel Laila, it's an Esrat sign. It's an Esrat sign about destroying. It's an Esrat sign when the north wind blows. In other words, it's a symbol that Chatzois is an Esrat sign. This is the source for taking Chatzois. It's an Esrat sign. Esrat sign means the time you, Kaddish Baruch Hu, will answer at Philis. So just as the Esrat sign was to destroy Mitzrayim, so to the Esrat sign, the north wind will blow. Now, here was my problem. If the north wind cures, and the north wind blew at night, so what was the problem? Why could they do a bismillah? So now it's very geschmack. It had nothing. At night, there's no sun. Yeah. At night, there's no sun to cure them, and therefore the north wind didn't blow during the day, and therefore the sun was not over them, and therefore they couldn't be cured. So that, that would explain uh, my, my problem very well. <clears throat> That's the point. If the, what, happens if, what happens if the wind would blow? There'd be no clouds. And then what would happen? Then there will be sun, and then they'll be cured. That's exactly what Rashi said, Mendy. The I guess that, you know what you, know, you, you don't make multiple nisim. In other words, you know, it's just because one, guess just because one nest happens, it becomes the teva. You know. <laughs> okay. Um, um, we no, I, I okay. No, what that wasn't a gemara. It's a meshachachma, and it's meshachachma son-in-law. It all gets comes together. It's a, it's a, a zera avram ravam luftagla. The reason why they didn't bring the carbon pesach, the reason why they bring carbon pesach is not being carbon pesach. You have to bring the kaddish to levana through the iya. And since the, it's covered by the clouds, you come to the iya. That's why we that's why we learn. But uh, I know it becomes a you know, because one big challenge, the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, amrav huna. Okay, guys, half cup just to get this down. Amrav huna devar toira moshech oichel betruma. What's a mashuk? Rashi says, Mahul, a person who has a bris mila, shenimshacha or lasai. His arlo was nimshach. I guess it was undone and it was, he, he drew his skin over the kisa es atara and it covered up, it covered up the crown of the, of the aver. So this is, a, in other words, he's basically uncircumcising himself. He was circumcised. He had a bris mila, and now it's called mashuk. Mashuk bar lasai. Question Does he have a din of an arlo or not? Mashuk bar lasai. Vartaira, mashuk eichel truma. Says the says the says of Huna midoraisa midoraisa a mashuk is not an oral he can eat truma umidavreim gazu alav mifnei shenir karol however midrabon and they were goyzer since he looks like an oral that not eat truma so the koyim was mashuk alasai so midoraisa he's, he's he, once once he had a bris mila he's not a, a halachic oral he's not a lachic oral he, and, and, and however midrabon and since near a karol he will not be able to eat truma so again to get Rav Huna clearly. Midaraisa, he's good. Midarabana, not. That's the key. Again, Midaraisa is okay. Midarabana, not. Nesive. Mashuk, Sarach Sheyimo. Mashuk, when a person who had a bris mila and then Mashuk, he needs to go undergo a mila. Mid, now, Fred, so what's the kasha? How can you tell me he's Midaraisa that it's Mutta if he has to do the mila? It says the Midarabana. It's Midarabana. In other words, if you said he's an oral, you shouldn't say Mashach Tsarach Shiyamo. What should you say? Mashach, Mashach Hari Hu Aral. You should say he's an oral. Says the Gemara, it's such an obvious answer. What were you thinking when you asked the question? Clearly, he has to do a Mila, but doesn't mean he's an oral. You didn't say he's an oral. Says the Gemara, my color had Tsarach Kitani. So the question is, what was the question? In other words, the Gemara is asking, with such an obvious answer, what was the kivun? What was the, the mindset of the person who asked it? So now the Gemara is explaining the mindset of a question. Only the Gemara. The Gemara is saying, you asked the question, now the Gemara is explaining why, you, why he was bothered to ask this question when the answer is so obvious. It's Gavaldi. Says the Gemara. Ketoyi b'seifa. The one who asked this question on Rav Huna was making a mistake from the Seifa. Rav Yehuda, Aimer, Rav Yehuda says, Lo yimel, mefnei shakana. A mashuk should not go ahead and do a bris mila because it's sakana. We're worried since he had a meal already, he might become a krus shavcha, right? He might, might, might be a person who would cut, cut and not be allowed in Kala Shem. He'd have to get divorced if he's married. She sakana he loy, it's sakana. So amu loy, they told of Yehuda, harbe mulim bimei ben kaziba, Okay. Now, who is ben kaziba? So the Gemara tells us that this is the famous bar kachva. Two and a half years. 
to, uh, after the destruction of the Beis Amigdash in the city of Betar, Bar Kochva led a rebellion against Hadrian and the Romans. He was successful. The Romans had them be Moshech Bar Lasai. That was the Romans. They, they, the Romans hated Mila, right? They had them be Moshech Bar Lasai. And now all the people then went on, underwent the operation and they had children. So you see, it's not a Sakana. So you see, it's not a Sakana. So now, says the Gemara, as a matter of fact, if you're interested, uh, the research for this, the, the, the Rambam in, in Yud Aleph for Malachim, I forgot that Lacha. The Rambam says that it brings that Rabbi Akiva, that Rabbi Akiva thought, he's, I don't think he brings Rabbi Akiva openly. He says some great people of the generation thought he was Mashiach. They thought Barakah was Mashiach, and Rabbi Akiva was one of them. Rabbi Akiva was one of them. It's a, it's a Yushalmi. Okay, anyway, says the Gemara. You see, that's not it's not a sakana. They did have it. Shinemar, Himo Yimo, Afilame Apaman. The double lushin is undergo a, a, a brismila even a hundred times. But Oimer, in addition, if, if, if we're gonna have a question on that Pasik, there's an additional Pasik. It's Brisi Hefar. It's, it's my the my bris, you 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 uh, you you nullified. The rabbi says a mashuk. This would include someone who was mashuk, right? So my I'm afraid the Gemara, why, why do you always have to bring a Vaimer? What was wrong with the first pasuk of Himel Yimo? Why, why do you have to bring a second pasuk of 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 Hafeb SBC? Says the Gemara, Vechit Hema Hai Himel Yimo the Rabbis sits in Hamakim and Samila. We brought in yesterday's these strips of flesh. That'll be Mark of the Mila. So Himel Yimo Afilu may uh, many times to take it off, and therefore you don't know it in a Mashach Kashma. Therefore it says SBC Hey for the Rabbis is a Mashach. Now, if we're getting to the the point. Who savar the maksha, the one who asked the question on Rav Huna felt mid the kanasa leashas kra when the Torah brings two psukim himel yimel or hefer brisi the araisa he it must be the araisa ah so it says the araisa and it says that you have to undergo a mila that would be in direct contradiction to Rav Huna that again it says you have to go ahead and do a mila Rav Huna Rav Huna was the opinion mid the araisa you don't that'd be a question. And the Kroy is in a Smachta Ma'am. Okay? So very good. That was the Maksha. He thought it was the Raisa. It wasn't the Raisa. And then it was the Rabbana. Now, what does, what does Rav Huna hold? Again, very important. He holds that mid the Raisa, you are not an oral, but mid the Rabbana, you cannot eat Truma because you look like an oral. We're going to question that. There's two ways to learn this Gemara. We'll learn it literally, and then we'll, we'll be more the, the, a different shot. Be sewed? Be sewed. Not I'm I'm not sure. I, I would think that's mashuch. I would I would think I think once you undergo a mila, the point is you had a mila. There's no going back, you know. There's no going back. I, that, that's now says the Gemara. Mesibe, tum tum. Right? A tumtum ain't oichel truma. A tumtum can't eat truma. Why not? He might be an oral. Guys, he might be an oral. You don't know what he is. A tumtum, again, his area is the oise makam is covered up. You don't know if it's a male or a female. If he's a female, uh, she should, if it's a, a tumtum, obviously, he, she should be able to eat. If it's a male, he's an oral. Noshov, his wife, which already is. <laughs> Questionable how do you, how maybe he's a woman, how can he be a woman? But Avadov and his servants, Oichlin, they could eat. Noshiv Avadov Oichlin, they could eat. Moshoch, this is what we need. The Noilat Kashu a person who was born Gemalit, Hari Elo Oichlin, they can eat Truma. Androgynous, that is Mayo. An androgynous, that is both Simonim of a male and female, and you did a Mila on the male part. Oichlin, the Truma can eat Truma, Maman of Shach. If he's a male, you did a meal, he's not an oral, and if he's a female, it's not a problem. The ain't oichlin be kachim. However, an androgynous can eat truma, but he can't eat kachim. <clears throat> what are we speaking about, guys? Kachim kadoshim, chatos asham, which are only eaten by male kohanim. And since he's an androgynous, you have to take into account he might not be a male kohen. So truma, which is regardless of gender, you could eat, not a problem. However, kachim, and only certain kachim, not kachim kalim, but kachim kedoshim, which is eaten, right? Kachim kedoshim is, uh, this is also Meshach Chachma. My nice Meshach Chachma just popped into my head. Kachim kedoshim, where, where's it eaten? It's eaten in the Azara. You have to eat kachim kedoshim, has to be in, in Mesa English proper. Kachim kalim, could eat in Yushalayim. It says, the reason why 
that Kotche Kedoshim is only eating by males, if you worry about Tarubis in the base of Migdash, because the women would have to go in and eat it only in the base of Migdash. But Shane Kotchem Kalam, which could eat Machala ear, you won't have a problem. There's a very simple reason behind why women cannot eat from Kotche Kedoshim. Anyway, Tumtum Eino Oichel, a Tumtum cannot eat. Now, this is repetitious, right, guys? They're very important. This is repetitious. Tumtum Eino Oichel, Lebe Chumav Lebe Kotchem. A Tumtum cannot eat Oichel, nor Chumav Kotchem, he might be an Oral. Okay, now, what do we want? We wanted one line. Kitani Mias, nonetheless, we learned. Moshach v'noilad kushu mal, Moshach if he if it's Moshach on his orla, or v'noilad kushu mal, hari elu eichlin he eats. Now there's two ways to learn this. Let's learn the way the Gemara is learning now. Meaning he eats midrabanon, he eats midrabanon, and tiyufta the Rav Huna tiyufta, and therefore it's an upshlag on Rav Huna. Rav Huna is maida you eat the raisa. So now when the Gemara says tiyufta. It must be that he eats afil de rabbanon. Said Rav Huna, since near a ka'aral, he looks like an aral, he can't eat the rabbanon. When the Gemara here says to yufta, therefore, it must be he eats afil de rabbanon. Guys, good? Again, Rav Huna says to dinim. The midaraisa, you could eat. Mid rabbanon, you can't. The Gemara brings a, a place over here where a mashach could. He could eat. Now, if you're going to be goyris to yufta the Rav Huna to yufta, it means he could eat the Rabbanon. Because if it's the rice, it's, it's a raya. There's another girsa, and Rashi brings that girsa, guys. Look at Rashi. Rashi brings this girsa of Lema Messiah. The Rashi's found, count, count up from the Gemara, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines from the Gemara ends up, right? Lishna Achrina Garsinon. Lema Messiah lay. Let's yeah. bring a raya, the Rav Huna. Right? That you can eat with the rice, not the rabbanon. Says Rashi, it pissed me. That's the right shot. <laughs> so, despite the fact we have the girsa to yifta, Rashi held lay masayli. So, just be aware that a Tysus brings both. Guys, look at Tysus. Tysus Mesevei. Second Tysus in the bottom. Mesevei. The Moshech Eichel Betruma. Just because he appears like an arrow, we won't ask him. Right? You have to the first price that you have to do a bismillah, and here it's speaking the raisa, and it will be a raya to Rafuna. So there's two ways to learn the Gemara. Very fascinating. Says the Gemara Vaita. Going over the Brysa, so Amar. Now, we guys, we had a strange Brysa. We, we had uh, Tumtum being Makadish women and, and the meeting, right? <clears throat> Amar, Tumtum ain't Oichel Bitruma, Nasha Vavod of Oichlin. So, what's the case, guys? It's a Tumtum that's a, a Koyain who's Makadish Abbas Yisrael. Yes? He's Makadish Abbas Yisrael. Nasha the Tumtum Minole. How does he have a? How does he have a a wife? Elay made the kaddish. If you're going to tell me that he was mekaddishav with kedushin, the Tanya tumtum shekidesh kedushin kedushin kedushav kedushin. A tumtum is mekaddish kedushav kedushin. What does that mean, fellas? Mean lechumra. You'll need a get al suffik. Maybe he's a male. Neskache. If the tumtum accepts kedushin, kedushav kedushin. And he or she would have to go ahead and get a get for themselves. Another, whether he's the quarterback or the receiver, right? Whether he's the male or the female, he needs a get. Now, Amar, guys, when do we say that his kedushav is kedushin or accepting it? That's lechumra. Le'inyin, you need a get. Le'inyin to us on imoy. on That's when we say. We apply a chumrah that Michayish, that maybe he's a man that's Makadish, or maybe he's a woman that accepts Kedushin. So we should have to worry about the, 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 the implications of that. But Lekula, to say he's a male and she's married to him, this Bas Yisrael, and Fi Truma, do you say that? Of course not. Of course not. Suffolk Ishahu, he's a Suffolk whether he's a woman. And a woman can't be Makadish a woman, at least in the Gemara, the woman can't be Makadish a, a, a woman. Good? Guys, you're good. 
and it's on and it's on tape for ever. Am Rabaya says Abaya, Why are we speaking about? It's covered up, but you could see that he's a man. You could see that his beitzim is is is, is beitzim are. You could see they're protruding. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so why can't he eat truma? Because he's an arrow. Yes. Right. That's the whole. Yeah. So very good. So you know he's a man. You know he's a man, and therefore his kiddushin, if he's a koyin for a woman, a bas, bas Yisrael would feed her, would feed her, right? It would feed her, it would feed her. However, however, he can't eat because he's an arrow. That's a biased teretz. Okay, and so when the Bryce says that the tumtum is kiddush of kiddushin, and he can eat truma, and his wife can eat truma, is according to Abaya, where we kind of know that he's a man. Yeah. Because it's covered. You, you have a suffix. You don't know what he is. So it's it's you don't know what the person is male, female. But over here, you clearly make a distinction. Okay. So, so okay, I hear I hear you, Kasha. I hear you, Kasha. But uh, Alpha P came. He can't do a beer. Uh, I, I got it. I yeah. Got it, but, okay. Alpha P came again. So the emissary is not a tum tum. According, it's not a tum That's a nechanami. It's an oral. So they're calling him tumtum based upon what, the, the physical figure Matthias, but in, halakhically, because he's not a tumtum. That's 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 the point. Rava Amar, my Noshav is his mother, Imai. In other words, his mother was married to a Kayin. If the mother has a child after the husband dies, she could eat truma. So this tumtum would feed the mother. So Nashav doesn't mean a wife. And then according to Rava, well, according to Rava, we're speaking about a real tumtum. We're not speaking about someone who you could recognize that he was a male. We're speaking about a real tumtum. And nonetheless, who's not shoved? The female in his life, he could feed his mother. His mother would continue to eat despite the fact that what? That her husband, the Kayin, died. He says, well, Imai Pshita. Imai's Pashit. He says, no, no, it's not so Pashit. Ma'u de tema moilid macho. Someone who's roy to father a child. She'in moilid ain't macho. Guys, what's the Pusik that if a woman has a <laughs> child, she eats? It says, Yelid Beisai. Blushing Yelid. So you might think Yelid has to be Yulad, someone who's born and someone that can be Moilid. So since this Tumtum cannot go ahead and procreate, so since he can't procreate, I would say he doesn't feed his mother, the Chiddush of the Bryce is that he does, that all you need is a physical child, it's even if the child can't go ahead and, 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 and have children. Kamash Mulan. Okay, now. So we have two Pshatim guys in, in, in Tumtum, right? And the, what was our problem? The Tumtum with his wife says, Abaya, it's his wife, and it's talking about where what? His, uh, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a zachar, and according to uh, uh, Rava, it's a tumtum. You don't know what he is, and when it says Noshav, it means his mother. Now, Toshma, we're going to ask a question on what on on, on Rava. Now, fellas, I point out to you this brisa. There was two mentionings of the word tumtum. Okay, let's go over it again. So we'll go over it again. The first line, Mesive, So it says now Mesive, by parallel to the Tosis of Midivrayim, Gazru Aleim. One line down, Mesive. And then you go down three lines after that. So it's repetitious. So now let's go, let's see it inside. Toshma, back by us. That's the safer, guys. The phrase was the safer. Very good according to Abaya. Tonaresha oral, vadai, the tony safer suffix oral. Even though you're calling him a tumtum. We're really speaking about only one tumtum. Only the safe is a tumtum. So the so the ratio is vaday and oral because we know he's a zacha. So a vaday oral doesn't eat. Not only does a vaday oral not even a suffic oral. The safe is a suffic oral. You don't know totally. <clears throat> so therefore, he doesn't eat. Now, according to Rava, it's redundant because it's speaking about two tumtumtums. Say that quickly. El the Rava tumtum the safe alamali. Right. Why do you guys? Why do you need to tempt them to safe? You're telling me the exact same thing. Why do you need to tempt them to safe? You're telling me the exact same thing. Says the Gemara, my tumtum oral. The tumtum of the safer means an oral. Now, now one second. So the tumtum of the safer is an oral. So one second. Hashta suffic oral loyachal. The first part you're telling me what is speaking about a tumtum and he doesn't need is a suffic and he doesn't need vaday oral achal. In other words. <laughs> They're playing both sides of the fence now. In other words, just like Rabbi called the Tumtum the Zacha, but he's calling the latter one an oral. So this is an oral. It's not real. Tumtum is an oral. If that's speaking about a real oral, it makes no sense. Madach, the Tumtum in the ratio, which is a vaday, is a suffix oral, doesn't eat truma. 
So you have to tell me that a Vada Yarol doesn't eat Truma? What's the big spritz? So it's like, no, 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 no. That's Matam Ka'omar. The safe is coming to explain the ratio. Matam Tumtum in Oichel, Bitruma. What's the reason that Tumtum can eat Truma? Mifnesh says, Suffolk Oral, who? He's a Suffolk Oral. For Oral, Eno Oichel, Loi Bitruma, Veloi Bikachim. And an Oral can't eat what? Loi Bitruma, Veloi Bikachim. How are we doing? Okay, Nimsa. Nimsa, <clears throat> the question, we averted the question on Rav Huna. Uh, we, well, we had a Tuyufta on Rav Huna or a riot Rav Huna. The Gemara now is going to suggest that Machloikis, whether it's the Rabbonon, the Raisa, Rav Huna said it's clearly the Rabbonon, the Raisa you could eat, is really a Machloikis Tanoyim. We're going to suggest it's a Machloikis Tanoyim. Says the Gemara, inside. Name it Tanoyim. Let's say what? It's a Machloikis, mach, machloikis Tanoyim. Mashuch, that's what we need, right? Mashuch, the ger shen is gayer, keshehu molot, mahol, the ger underwent a mila when he was uh, a Gentile. He then went ahead and, and converted, and now he's, 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 a, he's, he's a Jew. The cotton sha'av is manoi, and the shar calling the mulim, all of these, la suye mai, what's all the rest of the mulim? Mishiesh le shte arlois. Rashi here says he has two skins. Rashi in Bob in in Mesech the Shabbos said he had two gidim, he had two evarim. Ain't any mulim el biyoyim. All of these nimulim is during the day. All of these these are all nimulim during the day. So guys, <laughs> what do we need? Focus on what we need. That a mashuch, someone who's undergoing a bris milah, does it during the day. Now, why must he do it during the day? And my, why must he do it during the day? Because it must be a valid milah, right? Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon, Aimer, bismanoi. If it's a milah bismano, an eight day milah. That's only during the day. But if the mila is what is shaloi bismanoi, then the mulim biyoyim ubelayla. Then the mila could be either day or night. Now we're going to suggest that this this is between whether the mulim day and night is the machloikis whether it's the rabbanon or the raisa. If it's the raisa, it has to be during the day. If it's either the, the, the raisa, if it's not the raisa, it can be day or night. So now my lava hakemifli. The Masava, the Tanakamu said a Mashach has to be during the day, holds Mashach the Araisa. U Masava and Elizabeth Shimru said it could be the day or night, Mashach the Rabbanon. And therefore, that's, that's good for Machlaikis and Ravuna. And Ravuna would hold like what? Like Elizabeth Shimon. And Ravuna would hold like Elizabeth Shimon. Says of Tisbra, included in that list with Mashach was cotton Shav is Manai. A cotton that's nine days old, 10 days old, 11 days old, 12 days old. Is there oh. any man that holds the Rabbanon? Tois, Rashi brings the fellas to Gemara in the Sech, the Shabbos. Sometimes Mila can be in the ninth day, the tenth grade, tenth day, the eleventh grade, the twelfth. If it's born Ben you have to wait another day. If it's Ben Shmoshes Shabbos, it's going to be ten. Uh, ten. If it's Yontif falls out of the Shabbos, it's going to be eleven. If it's Rosh Hashanah, it's going to be twelve. So you and when and when is it during the day? So how could you tell me Pshat? You, in one clause, you said mashuch, and then amila shaloi bismana is during the day, and you want to say that's the raisa mashuch, and that's why, and what, and and amila bismana, you're going to tell me what? Umikul man diyamid rabbanon. Would you say that what kan shaloi bismana is the rabbanon? Because excuse me, I I I I didn't say it correctly. Light Rav Lazar of Shimon is going to say that what that that's during that that's during the that's not that's the rabbanon. So that can't be the sfaras amachloikis. El de Kulialma, Moshech de Rabbanon. Everyone holds Moshech de Rabbanon, like, like Rav Huna. The cotton shove is mana de Raisa, and cotton shove is mana de Raisa. So what's the Machloikis then? The Hoka Bahak Mithati. Mas Savar, the Tanakama holds, Dashina Uvi Yoim, and therefore Uvi Yoim, not only is mana even Shalab is mana, will be during the day. Mas Savar, Lazab Shimin, Loy Dashina Uvi Yoim. He doesn't dash in Uvi Yoim. The only one that's the eighth day is, is the eighth day. But one that is not, then he doesn't dash in Uvayoim to include a Milish Leibiz Mano. And therefore, it could be even what day or night. But everyone would hold that Mashuch is the Rabbana. Now, where do you see this Machloikas about a Vav? Says the Machloikas, Kihadi Yoser of Yochanan, the Kedarish. Now, this is din of Nicer, fellas. You're supposed to, there for a lot of times for different Karbanis, uh, for Chatas, it's a day and a night. For Osham, it's a day and a night. For Toid, it's a day and a night. For Shlom, it, it's, it's, it's two, two, two days and a night in between, right? As soon as that time is over, it, you can't eat it anymore. It becomes nicer if you leave it over. And you, you, you get curse if you eat that. So now, 
Noiser bismano will be as soon as it becomes nicer. Noiser shloi bismano is you would delay it in, in burning it. So now, ki hodu yosu ra yochanim v'kadarish. Noiser bismano ain't in this rock. Noiser bismano does not get burnt. Ela biyoyim only during the day. Shaloi bismanoi nisraf bein biyoyim bein belayla. If the noiser is shaloi bismano, let's say it's it's the fourth day, the fifth day after what? After you should have burnt it on the after on the third day, then it's bein biyoyim bein belayla. That's what Rabbi Yochanan said, and we asked the following question: The ACV Rabbi Alaza, the Rabbi Yochanan, the Amoira Rabbi Alaza ben Padas. He asked Rabbi Yochanan, "Ainly ella nima lishmini." This only tells me the eighth day. The she'ain nima ella biyoyim. I gave you the so guys, of all these cases. How do you know that also during the day? Right? With a vav. And even the man doesn't darshan vav in, when it comes to noiser, vav the darsh, and says veha noiser. So in other words, that's a double, guys. V and a the noiser. So even if you don't darshan one vav, Everyone's going to dash in v'ha nicer. So how could you, Rabbi Yochanan, say that what that you burn it br- after the shleib bismano? You can burn it day and night. Bechor you see over here v'ha nicer. Just like nicer bismano is only during the day, so to nicer shleib bismano is only during the day. That's what Rabbi Elazar and Padas asked on Rabbi Yochanan. Ishtik, Rabbi Yochanan was quiet. Bossed the nafik after Rabbi Elazar and Padas left. Amale Rabbi Yochanan and Lakish. So that's what he told Rish Lakish. Shamali Rish Lakish told him, Did they he? You think he said over his own Tyra? Mastisan, he was saying over a Bryce or a Taisefta. Where is this Taisefta? It's in the collection of what? Of, of Tanoic statements known as Sifra, also known as Taurus Kahanim. Good. So now, what does it say? So he went and looked for it. So Hechit, so Nafik, Rabbi Yochan went out. Tanya, he he learned Torah's Kahanim, Betil Siyomi in three days. The Savra, Betil Siyachim, and he understood it totally after three months. So now, that's it. So now we just wanted to, so we wanted to show you the commonality of the Limud, Vehanoiser, and Uvayom. So good. So right now, you wanted to say Rav Huna is a Machloikis Tanoim, whether it's the rice of the Rabbana, no, everyone holds it's the Rabbana, and the Machloik is there, whether day or night, depended upon a limit of whether you learn that from Bismana to Shalei Bismana. Okay. Amr Avalaz, new Gemara. Aral Shehiza has Asa Kishera. An Aral that spritzes the Paraduma is Kasha. An Aral that spritzes the Paraduma is Kasha. Nidi the Havi at Fulyoim. Maybe he's like a Fulyoim. Okay, so let's let's go. Let's give the background to, to uh, Paraduma. We've done this uh, more than once. We did it primarily in the beginning of Masech the Yuma. There is a uh, processes. You would gather the afa of the para, the para's ashes. You would put it in water. That's called kiddush. The water would be my uh, water. My own Kelly. It has to be water from a fountain. You put it in a kli. Well, you, you put the water in first, or the ash first. Mayim Chaim Al Kelly, I I don't remember. I I, I won't tell you. I, what, there's a, maybe Mayim Chaim Al Kelly is much. Mayim is there first. I'm not sure. You mix it. That act of putting it together is called Kiddush. You would take a high sap, you would sprink, put it in and sprinkle it on the, on the that's called Hazza. So we're saying the act of Hazza is kosher with an arrow, just like it's kosher with a Tful Yoyim. Now the Tzidoikim held that a Tful Yoyim could not do it. So we went out of our way. To Dafka be metama somebody and to do it. And because of this tremendous kula that we were knowing by Paraduma to be Yotsimi Libid Shal Sadoikim, that it's Fulyoim, someone who went to the mikvah and is waiting for evening to eat his truma, could do it. There was a slew of tremendous chumas as a result. You might recall, first of all, in our levels of Tumma, Kachim is to the fourth degree, Paraduma is to the fifth. They would raise children on a rock that there was no Shiloh of Tumas Hatahoim. I mean, really, some that really, really stringent, stringent Tumas because of what? Of this thing, because of this, because of this, uh, this cooler that they were knowing. So now, if a full yarn can do it, right? And a full yarn could do it, then what? Then an oral could do it. That's the half minute of the Gemara. Says the Gemara inside. Amr Abalaza, oral Shehiza Hazas of Shera, me did not be at full yarn. Even though it's full young, can't eat truma till the evening. One second. So you're saying, so 
a tefillahim can't eat truma and an oral can't eat truma. However, that's not an impediment to the tefillahim, so it's not an impediment to the oral. Neither one can eat truma, but the tefillahim can do the paraduma, so who within the oral can do the paraduma? That apparently is the, is the commonality. Says the Gemara, one second. Malat tefillahim shekein muta bevaisa. He can eat maisa sheni. He can't eat, he can't eat truma, but he can eat maisa sheni. Masha ain't can an oral, can't even eat maisa sheni. We're going on exerish of me menu, menu. Are we dealing with the Achila? The comparison of Achila is not speaking about Achila. We're discussing Nagia, touching it. Umat Fulyoim, Sha'asa bin Nagia, the Truma. A Fulyoim is Asa to touch Truma. Nonetheless, Mutta de Para, Aurel Shemutta bin Nagia. They both can't eat, but the Aurel could touch. Ain't I din Shemutta de Para? So it's a Kalvachimer. Madach a Fulyoim, who can't touch Truma. Can perform the hazah oral that could touch the truma. Ain't I been? Is it not a kalvachimer that he could perform hazah? That's Rebbe Lazar's limud. Tanya nami hachi. We have a brisa that substantiates Rebbe Lazar's limud. Hacha oral shehiza has asa kashera. An oral shahiza that went ahead and sprinkled has asa kashera. When my sahaya there was an incident. The chshiru chacham mazasai and the chacham permitted the spritzing of a oral. Meisidei. Okay now. Tuntim Shekidesh. Now, on the Amid Aleph, this meant that he's Makadish a woman. Over here, it means that he mixed together the Afer Paro with water. Don't get, don't, don't get mixed up. Because again, if you do, the Gemara is going to make little sense. Okay? So here, Tuntim Shekidesh, that he goes ahead, he mixes the, par, the ashes of the Paro with the water. He do shay puzzle. His Kiddush is puzzle. If Neshu Suffolk Aral, the off Aral puzzle the Kadesh. Guys, there's your Kasha. The Gemara is too shelling. Again, I, I, didn't, I didn't finish the Gemara. It's too shelling. There's no difference between Kiddush and Hazar. In other words, if you can't do first base, we're not going to let you do second base. The androgynous that's Moyle, and androgynous that's Bris Mila, Shekidesh, Kiddush Kasha, then his mixing is Kasha. Why not? He's not an oral. And Lechaira, it might be a woman. If you know him, Af androgynous, Shekidesh, Kiddush, Absolum, Fnesh, Suffolk, Isha, Bisha, Absolum, or Kaddish. Okay, so they are you an androgynous. And they seem to argue whether a woman can do Kiddush or not. According to the Tanakhama, he could. According to Rabbi Yehudi, he cannot. Kitani miha, nonetheless, we learned, Aro the Suffolk Aro, Pasal Melakadesh. So how can you, the Amoira Rebbe Laza, say that he can do Hazar? You see, he can't, he can't do Kiddush. And, and the male, if he can't do Kiddush, he won't be able to do Hazar. I'm Rabbi Yosef, hai Tana, this Tana is Tana the Rebbe Akiva. Okay, let's go back in time. Guys, back in time. We began this barrack. How do you know an, an oral cannot eat truma? Says the Tana Rebbe Eliezer, right? Ben Hurkinis, we got a Gezer Shava. What? Taish of Sachia, Taish of Sachia, the carbon Pesach. That's the source. Just like carbon Pesach, an oral can't eat from it, it says Taish of Sachia, so too an oral can't eat from, from, from truma because it says by truma, Taish of Sachia. That's Rebbe Eliezer. Says Rebbe Akiva, in it Tzarech. Ish ish misera arain kol is kol ish as as zarua oizav v'chol tamei v'chol kaidesh leisaychal. So Rabbi Akiva's source, guys, is tuma. He's he is he compares what he compares an oral to a tamei. That's the source. Ish ish. That's a zarua mitzayra. He's a zav. He's tamei. Can he truma? So Rabbi Akiva is saying that an oral. You know why he can't eat truma? Because an oral is tamei. So Mimele is Geschmack. You know why an oral can't go ahead? The Bryce that says it can't be Isaac and Paraduma? It goes according to didn't Rebbe Kiva. What does Rebbe Kiva hold? It's Tomei. A Tomei can't be Isaac with it. It's very Geschmack. Okay, says the more inside. I Tana, this Tana, who says that an oral can't do Kiddush, who are we speaking about? It's Rebbe Kiva, the Marbele la oral Kitame. He goes ahead and he's Marbe, he includes the oral in the process in, as, as, as a Tomei, the Tanya. You know why an oral can't eat truma? Because it says ish ish It includes an oral. So that's his teretz. The spices that that's a ter- so you have a kasha. You Rebel Laza, the Amoira says what? You the Amoira Rebel Laza, say he could. You know why? Because you hold like the Tana Rebbe Eliezer, who learns it out from carbon pesach. So the oral is an intrinsic thing in carbon pesach. It had nothing to do with tuma. So the mela an oral can do azar. 
the brisa that said you can't do azar is the sheet is Rabbi Akiva, who says it's machmas that is tummy, because his source for not eating chum from the oral is a whole source of tumma. Beautiful terrace. Amarava, Havi Asibna Kameh the Rabbi Yosef, the Kashali. Rabbi was the Talmud of Rabbi Yosef. I was sitting in front of him and I had a question. When the Shtame Tana Velisne Oral Vatame says Rashi, Velem Rabbi Akiva, he says Rashi, guys, listen to this. Where it, where it gets why where it gets wide a few lines up, four lines up. Emisa the Rabbi Akiva, Lechol Mili Oral Kitami Mashvale. If Rabbi Akiva makes an oral like a tummy in every instance, the, the, the listening, no Tana should slip away and learn it. In other words, in all of Judaic literature, Talmudic literature, you never ever find this comparison what between oral and tummy being synonymous and saying it's Rabbi Akiva, except your terrorists that you're saying here. We never find it. Rav said, if such a chiddish existed, the ramifications for an oral being Tomei, we should find some place where it says it. And we don't. That's his problem. No, his problem is it's such a chiddish godel, we should be able to go ahead and see that. Says the, says the Gemara, so back inside. Rashi fills in all the blanks. The Kashali, I never found it. What do you mean? We haven't found it. Beloi, but ketani a oral batami peturim in areia, an oral and a tummy a pata from the, from being oil or regel. The the pata from what from the carbon reia, says the Gemara. Hasam ishim the mayas. There, what is because what it's mayas. There, the reason over there is because it's disgusting. Since it's disgusting, but not not as tumah, but it's just disgusting. And we'll just the best Hashem will stop over here. Sira, sira.